Alzheimer's patients are unable to produce insulin, so they are unable to supply energy to neurons and cells die over time. I believe that's what finally causes the brain to shrink. If a patient's body cannot produce insulin, perhaps it can be supplied artificially. In clinical studies now underway in the U.S., insulin is delivered directly to the brain.
Call me Kim. My husband has started speaking aggressively. I feel stressed out and down, both mentally and physically. The rising population of people with dementia is putting pressure on medical institutions across Japan. Increasingly, hospital staff are temporarily tying patients to their beds or restraining them so they can't pull out intravenous drips or fall. Measures like these add to the feelings of insecurity and frustration. That can lead to a vicious cycle in which symptoms such as violent behavior intensify. We're trying to help them, but it's gotten to the point where we don't know who said these things are for. We're desperate to change the situation, but have no idea how to do that. Taking care of people with dementia is difficult. Eve Genest has 35 years of experience in caring for such people, mainly in Europe. He traveled from France to share his knowledge. I, I have a small developed a caregiving method called Humanitude. It's based on the idea that treating people with a human touch can ease certain behaviors and symptoms. <laughs> Juneste visited hospitals and elder care facilities around Japan to tell people about the approach. Zuka is 72 years old. She was diagnosed with Alzheimer's more than a decade ago. She often raises her voice or erupts in anger. People find it difficult to communicate with her. She sometimes upsets the people around her. This makes it hard for everyone, including caregivers. Jeunesse used the Humanitude approach to perform a rehabilitation exercise on her arm, which has grown stiff.
vacation at home. He's been getting help from Kaneko, who uses humanitude methods. He practices walking and stretching every day. He has regained the ability to hold conversations and smile. <laughs>
really problematic behavior, so things that give caregivers so much trouble, physically aggressive behavior, being uncooperative with care and irritable, and pacing, you know, forced motor activity, those are norepinephrine. Askin's research shows that Alzheimer's patients who have a higher volume of stress hormones also exhibit frequent behavioral and psychological symptoms. She's also found that individuals with Alzheimer's have a higher than normal level of stress hormones. When stress subsides, the brain halts the secretion of stress hormones. The hippocampus plays a role in this process. So it's involved in not only memory, but also in reducing stress hormones. But in people with Alzheimer's, the hippocampus atrophies, and its ability to reduce stress hormones weakens. This leads to an excessive level of stress hormones, which keeps the brain in a constant state of agitation. Some researchers believe the hormones that cause behavioral and psychological symptoms can be controlled through caregiving. Lynn Woods of Azusa Pacific University is exploring the possibilities. Alzheimer's patients using a gentle touch. Yes, I have friends with me today. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that feels wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, gee, you know a lot about it. In a few minutes. She then measures the volume of stress hormones in their saliva. She's found that in spite of atrophy of the hippocampus, patients who receive care combined with touch have lower levels of stress hormones. Woods has a theory to explain why this happens. When a person is touched gently, that sends signals to the brain that create a pleasant feeling. The brain then secretes hormones that stabilize emotions. Agitation in the brain settles down the secretion of stress hormones declines, and behavioral or psychological symptoms are suppressed. Good care, and someone who has a compassionate engagement, actually, they are the medicine. They are the treatment. They can be the treatment. The question is the degree to which physical contact can ease behavioral and psychological symptoms. Researchers in Japan are studying this. <laughs> this facility deals exclusively with people with dementia. A study here looked at how care with a gentle touch five times a week for six weeks affects behavior. Yeah. One of the subjects was an 89-year-old man. He had been hospitalized the preceding year after a traffic accident, and his dementia symptoms grew worse. Once he began living at the facility, he became verbally aggressive and started wandering. Caregivers treated him with gentle touch. After about 30 minutes, his face became peaceful and he stopped wandering for a while afterwards. The study found that verbal outbursts decreased in more than 70% of patients.
and some wandered less too. study of 
of 7,500 elderly people in Britain found that the rate of dementia had declined instead of risen, as was expected. This shows the percentage of people with dementia by age 20 years ago. The latest results show that the rate of affected people over 80, which should have risen sharply, has clearly declined. There was an overall drop of 23%. Also, <laughs> that we are less likely to express dementia at any given age. Well, first of all, Brain believes a certain public initiative may have played an important role. I think there's a very clear indication that we have done some primary prevention in the population for vascular disease. Measures in Britain to reduce strokes and heart disease cut the fatality rate for both conditions by 40% in 10 years. The rate of dementia also decreased. The key was encouraging doctors to help patients prevent lifestyle-related diseases. Ten years ago, Britain launched a system that gives doctors points for keeping patients healthy. For example, they get points for recording the blood pressure of people aged 45 or over for five or more years. Doctors can also receive points for identifying people with hypertension and improving the condition in 45% or more of the cases. Doctors get additional points depending on the number of patients whose conditions improve. Money earned through points can account for as much as 15% of a doctor's income. Britain is one of the few countries in the world with this kind of system. campaign against lifestyle-related illnesses isn't limited to the medical field. For example, cigarette vending machines have been removed to reduce the number of smokers, and it's illegal for retailers to have cigarettes on display. Salt consumption is tied to hypertension. The Department of Health recommends consuming 6 grams of salt or less per day and it has set salt content targets for 76 different foods. Major supermarkets, food manufacturers, and the restaurant industry have joined hands to help people reduce their salt intake. Britain has tackled lifestyle-related illnesses as a national public health priority. In doing this, it has also reduced rates of dementia. 1% of our GDP is spent on looking after dementia. Now, if we delay symptoms by five years, we we'll halve the number of people who have dementia. Half. That's enormous. So the saving is enormous. But forget the saving. The years of life that people will have, because I, you know, I care about the money, but I care about the people. Uh, is, 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 is going to be enormous. It turns out that measures to prevent dementia overlap in many ways with those aimed at lifestyle-related diseases. Drugs that can slow dementia's progress may soon become available, and changes to diet and exercise can help as well. The day may not be far off, when more people are able to experience life without ever developing dementia. Dementia is a major concern for people all over the world. Experts
experts in different fields are discovering promising new ways to overcome this challenging condition.